Been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same As they were a year ago But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change Been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same As they were a year ago But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago If you have accepted your diagnosis of inclusion body myositis, you will understand the purpose of this episode. If you have yet to accept your IBM diagnosis, you may find listening to this episode to be very difficult because of the physical disability that will impact your stamina, mobility, dexterity, and bodily functions or capacities. These disabilities can vary in degree and type depending on where you are in your journey with inclusion body myositis or IBM. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things While other disabilities may be more visible or easily noticed by others, IBM might be considered one of the invisible disabilities, especially in the early stage. And IBMers' physical disabilities sometimes have their impairments downplayed, ignored, or even mocked. Fortunately, as more people become aware of the diversity of disabilities and the impact they have on others, stigmas are being reduced. I was totally shocked when a neurologist told me I had a very rare condition in 2007 that not too many people had even heard of. In fact, the neurologist printed off and presented me with a short description of inclusion body myositis from the internet. That was probably smart as I probably wouldn't have remembered that name until I got home to do some more investigation. I also remember the neurologist telling me that research was ongoing and that a treatment or cure might appear any day. We all know that stands even today, a decade and a half later. Exercise and stressing is the only ray of hope that we have these days until that magic drug is discovered and thoroughly tested. Aerobic exercise protocols were used in eight IBM studies and demonstrated improvements in fitness or exercise capacity. Six different studies of strength training were observed with improvements in muscle function. In my case, since all my skeletal muscle is nearing the minimum, there will be little relief for me. Type 1 muscle fibers are fatigue resistant and rich in oxidative enzymes, and type 2 muscle fibers are fast contracting, fatigue prone, and rich in glycolytic enzymes. Normal muscle tissue has a random distribution of type 1 and type 2 fibers. We use type 2 fibers, our fast twitch muscle fibers, during short explosive periods of physical activity. Type 2 muscle fibers are quicker to fatigue but can produce stronger and faster bursts of power, according to Joe Tata, founder of the Integrative Pain Science Institute. Generally speaking, muscle fibers grow in small tears caused by physical activity heal, creating larger, stronger tissues. Unfortunate for IBMers is the fact that overexercising our type 2 muscle fibers no longer can promote subsequent muscle regeneration Therefore, rigorous exercise is not advised. Our body uses type 1 muscle fibers, also known as slow twitch muscle fibers, during prolonged steady state exercises that require endurance like a long leisurely bike ride or a long walk through the park. Skeletal muscle is made up of hundreds if not thousands of muscle fibers. There are currently seven identified human skeletal muscle fiber types. Not all research studies use all seven fiber types. Most researchers place all skeletal muscle fibers into just the three original fiber types, type 1, 
type 2A, and type 2B. Let's discuss these skeletal muscle types in terms of using our quadricep muscles that control our lower leg and stabilize our knees. The quadriceps are a group of four muscles that comprise the frontal thigh muscle. When walking or running, our quads bend our hip and extend our knees, stabilizing and absorbing the impact as you land. This propels you forward, transferring energy to the hamstrings as you move from the stance to the swing phase of the walking or running action. Type 1 muscle fibers are fatigue resistant and rich in oxidative enzymes, and type 2 muscle fibers are fast contracting and rich in glycolytic enzymes, but are fatigue prone. As we age, our muscles lose mass and begins to shrink. Our muscle fibers will shrink in size and numbers, making it harder for our muscles to respond as we get older. As we age, our hand grip strength begins to weaken, making simple activities like opening a jar more difficult. But the cell destruction of inclusion body myositis accelerates this process, and the reconstruction and strengthening of muscle fibers becomes more difficult. Maintaining a healthy diet and participating in daily exercise has always helped to slow the loss of muscle mass, even if it only helps compensating muscles not yet affected by IBM. A reason behind age-related transformation from type 2 to type 1 fiber composition may be due to the influence the motor nerve has on muscle fibers. Our body uses type 1 muscle fibers, also known as slow twitch muscle fibers, during prolonged steady state movement that requires endurance, like a long leisurely bike ride or a long walk through the park. Slow twitch muscle fibers are the most resistant to fatigue, but also produce a lot less force than fast twitch fibers. And if on our bike ride we encounter a steep hill, our type 2 muscles kick into action. Therefore, having a higher percentage of slow twitch fibers would suit endurance activities such as walking or cycling, whereas having more type 2 muscles is required for more demanding activities, just as a passenger train requires one engine to maintain its load over longer distances, a heavy cargo train may require additional engines to initiate movement and negotiate long uphill grades. While originally fighting my IBM diagnosis, I didn't have the strength to admit in my mind what the rest of me already knew. The idea of accepting our IBM diagnosis does not mean we are resigned to it. Actually, that's not what acceptance is about at any point of your IBM journey. Accepting this chronic condition is about understanding and no longer fighting where you are right now. Being diagnosed with a chronic illness such as IBM can feel like a train wreck. It's normal to experience a range of emotions in the wake of such a diagnosis. But as long as we deny where we are, we can't formulate a plan to move the train forward. Although it's normal to feel some grief, realizing that you have to move on will open a path for thinking about solutions to get you through the coming years. We need to stop fighting against our IBM reality, which I might add is a pretty fruitless and energy-wasting task, and instead plan for some more worthwhile and real changes that may move us forward towards coping with this undesirable disease. When you accept your IBM diagnosis, you'll realize it's a lot easier being the engine going forward rather than being the caboose. Stay on track, my IBM friends. I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change Been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same As they were a year ago But all will be okay I move on each and every day